In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the new vision multimodal capability within the GPT-4 API. So what I'm gonna be setting up here is a small little node project that will allow you to go ahead, put in a URL and put in a selector and it will go ahead and generate a JSX file with all the Tailwind classes for a particular component. So it's gonna be a relatively quick example, but it's just gonna show you how you can get up and running with using GPT-V or GPT-Vision. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a new project. So I just went ahead and I ran bun init. And from there, you can declare whether you wanna use JavaScript or TypeScript or what have you. Once you have that, just go ahead and make a .env. Within the .env, put in openai underscore api underscore key. Go ahead and grab an API key from platform.openai.com, and then you should be up and running. So once you have all that, we're going to go into our index.js, and we're just going to go through the steps here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to install a handful of dependencies. So we're only actually going to be using Puppeteer and OpenAI. So if you just go ahead and bun install uh, both Puppeteer and OpenAI, AI. So once you have that, we're just going to import them like you see here. Then at the top here, I'm going to set up a little configuration object just to make it easier to use and just for demonstration's sake. So you can uh, uh, change this if you want uh, once you actually get into the code. And I will mention that I'm going to be putting a GitHub repository link for all of this if you want a starting off point for using GPTV. So first for Puppeteer, it's very asynchronous. So we're gonna be awaiting a lot of things. So we're just gonna wrap it within an asynchronous function here. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna launch a Puppeteer browser. And if you haven't used Puppeteer before, so it's essentially a Chromium instance, a synthetic browser that's gonna be running in the background and performing the actions like you would if you were actually using a web browser. So there's a lot of really neat things that you're gonna be able to do um, with Puppeteer if you're interested in diving into it more. In this case, essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking screenshots of either components or full pages. So I'll just run through these all here. So the first thing that we're going to declare is the browser itself. So we're going to declare that we're going to uh, open it in the headless new. So you can also uh, set this up to be headless false if you actually want to see the actions that are being taken place within Puppeteer. So we're going to wait for a new page to load. We're going to set our viewport. So this is like a somewhere in the order of like a 15 inch MacBook Pro, uh, not with Retina. So the thing to note with GPT-V is the larger the image, uh, the more tokens that you're going to be using. So just to be mindful of that. So what we're going to be doing is once this is all set up, we have the synthetic browser all loaded up, the size that we want, we have a new page and whatnot. We're going to go to the configuration URL and then we're going to wait for the network to idle. So essentially all those XHR requests, network requests that are coming in, we're going to wait for those just to stop before it actually takes the subsequent actions here. So here we're going to just get our directory all ready. So everything's going to be saving out to this website folder in this example. So we're going to be saving out both the screenshot that we take as well as the JSX that it generates, if any. And then we're just going to be setting it up in a way where it's just going to organize them uh, stack one, one by one. So it's going to have the image and then the JSX file, and it's going to be organized based on the timestamp and then the essentially the URL of the website. So first we're going to check whether the configuration uh, selector actually has a value. So it will work if you just want to take a screenshot of the full uh, web page. Um, but the thing with a full web page, if say it's a long web page and you're trying to take a screenshot with that and you're passing it within GPTV, the results are going to be, you might not get, you know, as much of, of a sort of bang for your buck um, if you go ahead and do that, but you definitely can. So in another video, when this first came out in their GUI, I did some examples on uh, taking the Netflix homepage and the Google homepage, and it did sort of a decent job at doing sort of the layout. So you do have that option with the, the setup here. 
So first we're going to wait for that selector to appear on the screen. So Puppeteer has a lot of really nice methods, uh, this being one of them where you can actually wait until that element is visible. So with a lot of modern frameworks and things being rendered um, on the fly with a lot of websites, like portions of the website might load at, at different times, you can actually wait for particular selectors. So say if you see something on a website, you're like, I like that button, I like that input, whatever, I like that sort of chat area bar, whatever you're trying to put in here, you can use this method here and actually wait for the selector, which is super handy. So we're just gonna check. So if the element exists on the page, we're gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of the element and we're gonna log that out. So we're gonna be logging out a lot of things just so you can see the process and the steps that we're taking to do all this. Then if the element wasn't found, we're just gonna log that out as well. Then if there isn't a selector within the configuration object there, we're just gonna go ahead and take a screenshot of the page. So after that, we're just gonna clean up that Chromium instance. We're gonna uh, just browser.close here. And then for the GPTV endpoint, so you can pass in a URL. So say if you were to upload this, to uh, like an S3 bucket or something like that, you could pass in the URL to OpenAI's API, or alternatively, you can do it just like this with Base64. So within Node, you can just convert it to Base64 and send it just like this. So then we're going to initialize our OpenAI client, and then we're just gonna log out that we're sending this to the API. So I have a few things within the content uh, description that I'm passing in, and the reason for that, when I was initially trying this out, and I tried uh, sending in a screenshot of Google, and I said, recreate this page. Now the responses I was getting back was, I can't do that, this is copyrighted material, et cetera, et cetera. So I just sort of uh, massage that uh, message a little bit, uh, to just try and remove any proprietary or copyrighted content. Essentially, all of the things that it was saying it can't do. Um, you know, this is more just for demonstration's sake. You know, I'm not trying to infringe on anyone's copyright, uh, obviously. So um, just if you run into that, this is a system message that you can pass in. And the system message should be weighted pretty high. Um, so it hopefully should listen to that. But to make it even more prominent is you can also pass in uh, some of the things that you mentioned within the system prompt as well. So I'm going to say make a high level uh, Tailwind and Next.js component based on the screenshot of this website, remove copyrighted material, only return valid uh, JSX. So I said high level. So in playing around with this a little bit, uh, it's not going to go ahead and replace like front end developers, for instance, like it's not going to be able to take in every little bit of a website and render it exactly as you want, uh, but it does a pretty good job. So it will give you sort of a good starting off point, And then from there, you can go in and make the tweaks that you need. So the way that we pass in the image URL, so we're just gonna specify that it is the type of image URL, and then we're gonna be passing in that base 64 screenshot right here. So I'm gonna be putting in a max token uh, output of 300. You can increase this or decrease this as you see fit. If you're doing full screens, it will probably uh, run out um, of, uh, or it will save out before it's actually complete. Um, whereas if you're just using like small buttons or text areas when trying this out, it should be fine with 300 tokens. So here we're just going to be extracting from the response from OpenAI everything between that JSX. So if you didn't just want JSX, say you wanted to generate all sorts of different components uh, for a, you know a front end or back end or application or what have you, you can go ahead and make a, a more sophisticated version of this. Since this example is just strictly using, I'm just asking for JSX. I'm just going to be matching solely on the JSX here. So if it f finds the uh, JSX content, uh, we're just going to go ahead and uh, make our path for that file. And then if that JSX content is within the response of the message, we're gonna go ahead and save it out. Otherwise, if it doesn't have a valid JSX response, we're just going to log out that error here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And I'm just gonna pull over a couple websites uh, for examples here. So if I go right back to the top here, 
So we have Google and we have Nav. Now, a quick way that you can go in and grab the uh, selector that you want. So if you just open up the inspector and if you look for a unique class. So if you can't find a unique class, you might have to use something like nth of type or, or what have you, um, or get a little bit more creative on how you're actually gonna be selecting that. But in this example, so let's say I just want to target this whole sort of text area box. So if you go ahead and get the class name and then you just do a command F or control F on Windows, you can paste in that class and see if it only has that one element. So here I just see there's that one class on the page. So this should be safe to be able to use for my selector. So you put it in a selector just like you would using like a CSS or you know document query selector and we can go ahead and save that out here. So if we just go ahead and bun index JS, we'll run that. We'll see, okay, we have a screenshot of the page and then pretty quickly, we have the initial JSX for our little component here. So we have, it's even called search component. We see all the familiar Tailwind classes here. And yeah, so you can go around and play with this, uh, uh, see what you can do with it. But I just thought this would be sort of an, a quick and interesting demonstration on just one of the many uh, different possibilities that you can use with GPTV. So I'm gonna be covering the rest of the week as well as the next few weeks, uh, a lot of new content, uh, technical tutorials in Node and Bun, and also Next.js on how you can leverage a lot of the new features within OpenAI's uh, announcements that they had yesterday. So if you're interested in this type of content, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.